welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam vandeham yokhilan jagat chari karti bari bharti संजरी हरती लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम जो खिलन जगत चरी करती बरी भरती संजरी हरती लीलया इन दिस कोर्स वी एम टू स्टडी द थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट टाइप्स ऑफ समास इन संस्कृत namely avyayi bhava bahuvrihi and dvandva we have already studied avyayi bhava and bahuvrihi samasas in some detail currently we are focused on the dvandva samasa this is an extremely important type of samasa in sanskrit its features can be mentioned in brief with the help of the equation mentioned on this particular slide where we have x and y both mentioned in square brackets indicating that they have independent existence as far as the word form is concerned as well as the meaning is concerned as well as the accent is concerned the plus sign between x and y indicates that the x and y both they are semantically related and the speaker of sanskrit decides therefore to merge them together and the process then begins and the compound gets generated and the output of this process is one unit in the form of xy this xy is one unit and has got three features aikarthya or ekarthata aikapadya or ekapadata and aikasvarya or ekasvarata now xy on the slide both of them are shown in bold characters primarily to indicate that both of them in the dvandva samasa act as the head of the samasa in the avyayi bhava samasa x was marked in the bold to indicate that in the avyayi bhava samasa x that is the first member of the samasa acts as the head in the tatpurusha samasa y was marked with the bold characters indicating that y or the second member of the tatpurusha samasa acts as the head in the bahuvrihi samasa none of them was marked in the bold characters indicating that the head lies outside of the compound and neither x nor y act as the head of the samasa now in the dvandva samasa both of them x and y act as the head and therefore they both are marked in the bold letters in the ashtadhyayi the dvandva samasa is stated at various places so the samasa vidhayaka sutra the sutra that prescribes the samasa or lays down the condition for the processing of the compounding is 2.2.29 charthe dvandvaha charthe dvandvaha then the samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutra the sutra that prescribes the suffix that comes at the end of the samasa is stated by the sutra 5.4.106 then there is swara vidhayaka sutra which is stated in a small section of rules 6.2.34 onwards up to 37 then we have ekavad bhava vidhayaka sutras from 242 to 2416 and then linga vidhayaka sutra is stated at 2.4.26 we have already studied the samasa vidhayaka sutra charthe dvandvaha 
we also studied the loan samasanta pratyaya vidhayaka sutra tvadvat chodashahanta samahare 5.4.106 we also studied the sutras which determine the purva pada in the dvandva samasa under the theme purva pada nirdharana which are stated in 2.2 and now we in this particular lecture will concentrate on ekavad bhava so what is ekavad bhava when the dvandva samasa takes place when the sense of itaretara yoga is denoted the output samasa has the feature of the udbhutavayava bheda samuha udbhutavayava bheda samuha udbhuta avayava bheda samuha a collection samuha in which the constituent parts avayava udbhut avayava maintain difference bhed the output samasa will have gender and number therefore accordingly and so we get all the numbers singular dual as well as plural plural in the itare tara yoga samasa because of this underlying feature when the dvandva samasa takes place when the sense of samahara is denoted the output samasa has the feature of the tirohitavayava bheda samuha tirohita avayava bheda samuha a collection in which the difference within the constituent parts disappears a collection in which the difference within the constituent parts disappears the output samasa therefore will have gender neuter and number singular here we do not get all the numbers singular dual as well as plural on account of this particular underlying principle now there are some words which demonstrate a particular feature whenever they get compounded as dvandva samasa they get compounded only when the samahara is denoted and never when itare tara yoga is denoted by the speaker this is the case with some words and so they will always be in singular and in neuter they will always have ek as the number and this is what is ekavad bhava some words always get compounded when samahara is the meaning when ekatva is denoted and therefore there is this theme ekavad bhava 2.4.1 is the beginning of this ekavad bhava but the ekavad bhava for dvandva begins with 2.4.2 the sutra 2.4.1 is dvigur ekavachanam and 2.4.2 is dvandvascha pranituriya senanganam so now let us study this section by one by one so now let us study the sutras in this section one by one first let us study 2.4.2 the sutra is dvandvascha pranituriya senanganam the meaning is the dvandva samasa of the limbs of animals pranyanga of the parts of the musical instruments turiya anga and the parts of the army sena anga takes place only in the sense of collection or samahara the word ekavachanam continued from 2.4.1 dvigur ekavachanam what this sutra stands for is that pranyangaadi naam samahara eva if the samahara is made obviously there will be singular number that is available to us and still this sutra is saying that there is ekavachana which is a restatement and that restatement reinforces a particular semantic point and that is pranyangaadi naam samahara eva only samahara is possible of pranyanga turiyanga and senanga and not itare tara yoga that is the point so here are the examples these are the examples of the pranyanga 
a group or a collection of hand and leg. That is the meaning to be conveyed. And we have Panischa Padascha Anayoho Samaharaha as the Laukika Vigraha. Then Pani plus Su plus Pada plus Su, this is the Alaukika Vigraha. Samasa Saudhnya takes place, Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place, Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and we delete both the Supratyayas. So we have Pani plus zero plus Pada plus zero and then we join them together, we get the form Pani Pada. Pani Pada. Now we have Pani Pada plus Su and Pani Pada is a Samahara, so therefore it denotes the neuter gender and singular number. So when we add the suffix Su after it, by the Sutra Atom, this Su gets substituted by Am, so we have Pani Pada plus Am and then there is the Sandhi that takes place and we get the form Pani Padam as the Prathama Ekavachana of the word Pani Pada. Similarly, when the meaning to be conveyed is a group or collection of the head and neck. So the Laukika Vigraha is Shirascha Grivascha Anayoho Samaharaha Shirascha Grivascha Anayoho Samaharaha So we have the Alaukika Vigraha namely Shiras plus Su plus Griva plus Su. So the Samasa Saudhnya takes place and the Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place. Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies and so we delete both the Supratyayas. So we have Shiras plus zero plus Griva plus zero and then we join them together Shiras Griva. Then Sa is substituted by R and Ru is substituted by U and then a and U get substituted by Guna, so we get the form Shiro Griva. Since this is a Dvandva Samasa in the sense of Samahara, this Samasa denotes neuter gender and also singular number. So we have Shiro Griva plus Su, and now this Su gets substituted by Am, so we get the form Shiro Grivam to be used in the sentence. Now let us look at the example of Turyanga, a collection or group of Mridanga player and a drummer. Mardangikascha Panavikascha Anayoho Samaharaha. This is the Laukika Vigraha. Mardangikascha Panavikascha Anayoho Samaharaha. Mardangika is the Mridanga player and Panavika is the drummer. So we have Mardangika plus Su plus Panavika plus Su. So Samasa Saudhnya takes place. Pratipadika Saudhnya takes place. Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies. So we have Mardangika plus zero plus Panavika plus zero. And so we get the finally derived Dvandva Samasa output namely Mardangika Panavika. Since this Samasa denotes Samahara, this Samasa will denote the neuter gender also and singular number. So we add the suffix su after it and this su gets substituted by um and so finally we get the form mardangika panavikam. Now this is the example of the samahara of senanga when the meaning to be conveyed is a group or collection of charioteer and horse rider. The Laukika Vigraha is Rathikascha Ashvarohascha Anayoho Samaharaha. Rathikascha Ashvarohascha Anayoho Samaharaha. So we have the Alaukika Vigraha namely Rathika plus Su plus Ashvaroha plus Su. And then Samasa Saudhnya, Pratipadika Saudhnya take place. Then Supodhatu Pratipadika Yoho applies. And we have Rathika plus zero plus Ashvaroha plus zero. We join them together and we get the form Rathikashvaroha. And then finally, by applying the Supratyaya, substituting it by Am, we get the form Rathikashvaroham. This is the example of the Senanga denoting Samahara. Let us go ahead and study the next Sutra 2.4.3. 
Anuvade Charananam. The meaning of the sutra is the following. The Dvandva Samasa of the words denoting the branches of the Veda and their recitation takes place only in the sense of collection, when the sense of mere repetition without the meaning comprehension is understood. I repeat, the Dvandva Samasa of the words denoting the branches of the Veda and their recitation, Charananam, takes place only in the sense of collection, that is Samahara, when the sense of mere repetition without the meaning comprehension is understood, Anuvade. What is the meaning of Anuvada? Anuvada is a technical term and as is explained in the meaning, Anuvada stands for Pramanan Tarabhagatasya Arthasya Shabdena Sankirtanam Anuvadaha Pramanan Tarabhagatasya Arthasya Shabdena Sankirtanam Anuvadaha Anuvada is repetition of the word the earth of whose is available through the other means. Charana Shabdaha Shakhadhyā Yishu Purusheshu The word Charana in this sutra does not refer to only the branch of Veda, but those who recite the that branch of Veda. There is another statement added on this sutra saying that this particular samasa is done only in the environment of the following elements. Sthenor adhyatanyancha iti vaktavyam. There is one more statement on this particular sutra which further delimits the scope of this particular samasa when this statement says that the samasa is done only when a certain kind of verb is used and in a particular tense. The statement is the following. Sthenor adhyatanyancha iti vaktavyam. This compound takes place when the output sentence consists of the verbs denoting the aorist past adhyatani of the verbal root stha and in. So the limited domain of stha and in as verbal roots as well as the aorist past tense make the compounding process over here uh, in a very limited domain. So we get the sentences Udagat Kathakalapam and Pratyashthat Kathakauthumam. So Katha and Kalapa and Kauthuma are the references to the recitation of the respective branches of the Veda, Katha and Kalapa and Kauthuma. And the point is that this recitation, Udagat, this recitation remained, this recitation was established, that is the meaning conveyed by Udagat and Pratyashthat. So Katha Kalapa and Katha Kauthuma are the samasas formed in accordance with Anuvade Charananam 2.4.3. As the commentators explain, Katha Kalapadinam Udaya Pratishthe Pramanantaravagate Yada Punaha Shabdena Anudhyate Tada Ida Mudaharanam. Let us proceed further to 2.4.4. Advaryukratur Anapumsakam. This sutra means that the Dvandva Samasa of the non-neuter words denoting the sacrifices stated in the Yajurveda takes place only in the sense of collection or samahara. I repeat, the Dvandva Samasa of the non-neuter words Anapumsakam denoting the sacrifices stated in the Yajurveda Advaryukratur. Advaryu stands for Yajurveda and Kratu stands for the sacrifice, the Soma sacrifice in particular. So such a Samasa takes place only in the sense of collection. So Arka and Ashpamedha are such two sacrifices and the words are not in neuter gender. 
So there Samasa takes place in accordance with this particular Sutra in only in neuter gender and only in Samahara. Arkascha Ashvamedhascha is the Laukika Vigraha and we get the finally derived Samasa output as Arkashva Medha and then it is Samahara so it is in neuter and also singular. So we have Arkashva Medham. Similarly, Sayanhascha Atiratrascha is the Laukika Vigraha and the finally derived Samasa output is Sayanhati Ratra and then it is in neuter and singular. Kratushabdaha Somayageshu Urudhaha that is a statement available from the commentators explaining the meaning of the word Kratu and so some other sacrifices do not become eligible to be operated under this particular sutra. The next sutra is 2.4.5 which is Adhyayanato Aviprakrishtakhyanam. The Dvandva Samasa of the words denoting the person whose proximity in the sequence of recitation is understood takes place only in the sense of collection. I repeat, the Dvandva Samasa of the words denoting the person whose proximity Aviprakrishtakhya in the sequence of recitation, Adhyayanataha, is understood, takes place only in the sense of collection or Samahara. So, Padakascha, Kramakascha, Pada and Krama are the two parts which are to be recited in sequence in order, first Pada, then Krama. So, the reciter of the Pada, which is called Padaka, who is called Padaka, and the reciter of Krama, who is called Kramaka, they are placed in proximity. And therefore, Padaka and Kramaka, they get compounded only in the sense of Samahara. And we get the Samasa, Padaka, Kramaka. Similarly, Kramakascha, Vartikascha. And so the compound output is Kramaka, Vartika only in the sense of Samahara. The next word is, the next sutra is 2.4.6 Jatir Apraninam. This means the Dvandva Samasa of the words denoting the generic property of non-living takes place only in the sense of collection or Samahara. I repeat, the Dvandva Samasa of the words denoting the generic property Jatir of non-living Apraninam takes place only in the sense of collection. So we have Aracha Shastricha as the Laukika Vigraha and the finally derived output is Arashastri where because this is a neuter so Raspo Napumsake Pratipadigasya applies and shortens the final long E. Similarly Dhanacha Shashkulicha and we get the finally derived output namely Dhana Shashkuli. Ara, Shastri, Dhana and Shashkuli, these are the words referring to the generic property as Pravritti Nimitta, the core cause of their usage. And so these are Jati Shabdas, but they do not refer to any living object and therefore they are non-living, Aprani, and therefore they are eligible to be compounded under this particular Sutra. The commentators also note down that this Sutra applies only to the words which denote the generic property of the substances and not those of the properties as well as the actions. Dravya jati yanam, na guna kriya jati nam. So, when the gunas like Rupa, Rasa, Gandha and Sparsha are compounded, they are not compounded as Samahara. So, we have Rupa, Rasa, Gandha, Sparsha, This is Itare, Itare Yoga. Similarly, Gamana Kunchana Prasaranani, this is also Itaratara Yoga and this is not done the Samahara way. Then we go to the next Sutra 2.4.7, Vishishtalingo Nadi Desho Agramaha. This Sutra means that the Dvandva Samasa of the words 
denoting the river as well as place, nadi and desha, except the village, akramaha, when in different gender, vishishtalingaha, takes place only in the sense of collection. I repeat, the dvandva samasa of the words denoting the river, nadi, as well as the place, deshaha, except the village, akramaha, when in different gender, vishishtalingaha, takes place only in the sense of collection or samaharu. So we have udhyascha iravatiche as the laukika vikraha where udhya is in masculine, iravati is in feminine and udhya refers to a river, iravati is also the name of a river and so these two get compounded in the sense of samaharu and so we get udhiravati where the final vowel is shortened on account of the sutra raspo napumsake pratipadikasya. Similarly, gangacha shonascha both appear in different genders and they are compounded in the sense of samahara and the final output is ganga shona. These two examples are the ones for nadi. The next example is that for desha without mention of any village. Kuravascha kurukshetrancha kuru kurukshetra kuru kurukshetram. So kuru refers to and kurukshetra refers to a place, a desha. Kuru is in the masculine gender, kurukshetra is in neuter gender and so they get compounded and in accordance with this samasa in the sense of only samahara, kuru kurukshetra. There are some additional statements on this sutra. For example, Parvatanam grahanam nabhavati. The words denoting mountains do not undergo this operation, even though they can be said to be referring to the desha. So, Kailasascha gandhamadanancha. Even though they are in different genders, they are not subject of this sutra. And so we get Kailasa gandhamadane as itaretara yoga. Similarly, Nagaranam Pratishedhasya Pratishedhaha. So, by Agramaha, the Nagaras are prohibited. And now this statement says that the Nagaras do not undergo the negation, that means negation of the negation. That means they do undergo the process stated in this particular sutra. So, we have Mathuracha Pataliputrancha, both are in different genders. Mathura in feminine, Pataliputra in neuter. So here this sutra applies and you get Mathura Pataliputra as the Samahara Dvandva. Ubhayataha Gramanam Pratishedha. Ubhayataha Gramanam Pratishedha. Sauryam cha Ketavatancha. Saurya is the city, Ketavata is the Grama. And since one of them is Grama, this is negated. And so there is no Samahara Dvandva, there is rather Itaretara Dvandva. So we have Saurya Ketavate. Then we have 2.4.8, namely Kshutra Jantavaha. The meaning is that the Dvandva Samasa of the words denoting the small species, Kshutra Jantavaha, takes place only in the sense of collection. So, Daushascha Mashakascha. Daushascha Mashakascha. And we get the form Dausha Mashaka as a Samahara Dvandva. Yukacha Likshascha. The Samahara Dvandva takes place and we get the form Yuka Liksha. Then we have 2.4.9, which is Yeshamcha Virodha Shashvatikaha. The sutra means that the Dvandva Samasa of the words denoting the permanent opposition in animals and birds takes place only in the sense of collection. So Marjarascha Mushakascha, this is the Samahara Dvandva and so we have Marjara Mushaka. Ahischa Nakulascha and there is Samahara Dvandva and we get the form Ahi Nakula. Marjara and Mushaka cat and mouse, they are understood to have the permanent opposition. Similar is the case with snake and mongoose. 
ahi and nakula to summarize the dvandva samasa denoting the samahara collection is in neuter gender in various semantic conditions the dvandva samasa is restricted to denoting only samahara or collection thereby denoting neuter gender and singular number it also results in the shortening of the final vowel as well as declensions accordingly we continue studying this ekavad bhava in the next lecture these are the references thank you very much